In this episode, we're gonna add our final fifth fish to that Red Sea Max Nano. And we've got some more corals from oceanbluecorals.com. Let's add to that Zoa Garden. Lovely to see you all. You've guessed it. Let's roll those titles. Now then, it's absolutely lovely to see you back on Jay's Real Reef in this sunny Derbyshire. I thought I'd bring you down the canal and see what fish is knocking around here. Well, speaking of fish, in this episode we're going to add our fifth and final fish from Ness's Lair all the way up in Scotland. Now, for some of you, it's going to be no surprise. If you follow the live stream, I've already talked about this little fish for a good few weeks now, but I'm super excited to see it for the first time and get it into the tank. So on this episode, we're going to have a little look at that. Also, I've been shopping again. Yeah, that upgrade is getting further and further away as I buy more corals. I cannot afford quite to upgrade at this moment in time, but I've been purchasing again from oceanbluecorals.com. Uh, somewhere on the screen is their logo. They had the most stunning zoas and I've been back again. I've bought, purchased three more little zoa frags, which I'm going to share with you on this episode as well. When oceanbluecorals.co.uk put more zoas on the website, I was so impressed last time I had to go shopping. So let me show you what I got. Seduction, rainbow like two polyps. I also got some uh, frozen hornets with a, with a nice blue center and a lovely blue lagoon single polyp. Even chucked in some lovely candy apples as a bit of a freebie. I think that's because I bought over 10 frags from him. If you want to see when I planted the zoo garden, check out the video on this channel. But I'm super happy. I now have blue corals on the reef, which is so hard to find. My zoas love elevated phosphates of above 0.08 ppm. It adds so much colour and I'm so excited to see how this garden will look in four to six months time. What the hell is going on? Ness's Layer Marines.co.uk sent me that my fifth and final fish for a nano. Look at the size of that polybox. Is it a stingray? Is it a shark? Well, check out the website if you're in the market for fish. This is my good lady. She took the APC delivery at 9 a.m. in the morning. I wasn't in. Uh, it came highly recommended by reefers on the live stream, and Bearded Reef also said this is a place to get fish from. So, yeah, let's give it a go. Let's see how we get on. Uh, it came packaged with heat packs inside and lots and lots of kind of folded up paper just to keep the fish secure. And then it was triple bagged in case of any leakage. But this fish is not want to come out into my nano. We bought a flame scooter blenny and there he is. After 24 hours in the APC van, um, <laughs> this little fish needs acclimating. Now all fish saltwater fish must be acclimated. So I've got myself a big tub off the internet. My good lady, she floated the LFS bag from Ness's layer for about five hours in the tank with the existing water, bring it up to temperature, and the other fish could also get to meet the new arrival safely. Now, I've got a 75 litre, 20 gallon nano, and I wasn't sure what fish to get. I like colour. The Royal Grammar was an option possibility and I'm also a massive fan of Neil's Reef Neil's Aquarium the blue spot jawfish but these are super tricky to keep and they like colder temperatures so I went with the flame scooter blenny super coloration absolutely stunning fish and there he is in a little bit of carbon as well but looking super healthy to say he's been on that sort of journey Drip acclimation, absolutely critical to climatizing your new saltwater fish to your water parameters. So the filter is inside the Red Sea Max Nano. The sea clamp holds it on side of the tank. The water then through a vacuum is then pushed through a valve, which then you can control the flow rate. That then goes up to another sea clamp on the side of the drip acclimation tub and we get it flowing at about one drip per second. There's a link in the description. I got this one from eBay. It takes me about 45 minutes to an hour. I don't rush it. And the idea is to try and double or triple the existing water volume. Once you've doubled or tripled the volume, your fish is ready to go in the reef. Let's have a look at him. TMC call these fish flame scooter blennies. Other places call them ruby dragonettes. You can call him what the hell you want. It is a stunning little nano fish. I don't like to use nets because that can kind of damage the fins and stress them out. So I'm just going to carefully cup, cup him in my hands. Super active, super healthy and uh, credit to Ness's lair. Here he goes in his new home. 
Flame Scooter Blennies can only be found in one place in the world. So here's the geography. They're found just off the Jola Island in the Sulu Sea, south of the Philippines. And that's where this little guy would have originally come from. Now, the fact that I've got one in my Nano and I get to see him every single day is an absolute privilege. Now, in the wild, they are called bottom dwellers, which doesn't sound very inviting. But that, what that means is they live amongst the substrate, the rubble, the broken coral and the outcrops between 20 and 38 metres down. Now, this little guy is going to struggle to get 30 centimetres in my little nano, but hopefully he'll like his new little home. Now, the flame scooter blenny are described as expert fish. And what that means is that you should never put one of these little guys in a tank that's less than eight months old. Ideally, the tank should be one year or older. A fully matured system. Now they feed off microfauna, which is trapped in sand and rock. So they require established live rock and sand bed to keep them well fed throughout the day. They're reef safe, so your corals are going to be all right. And they are very peaceful fish, so they should get along with everybody in your reef tank. The bright scarlet colour with the white and black dots on his back, a beautiful ventral yellow fin with a little bit of a green tip is what really attracted me to this beautiful little fish. They grow to about three inches in length and he uses that ventral fin just to scoot along the sand bed. He moves like no other fish in the tank at this moment in time. They like to perch on the rock. He's got eyes just protruding from the top of his head and he's got a little beak as well and he pecks at anything that he sees on the sand bed like copepods or little worms. Now, they love the females. He's happy to live with two or three females but he likes to live with no males. So, yeah, get some girls in there as well. I know Colin's got some girls with his. Uh, introduce them at the same time and then they'll always be happy. If he's got a girl in the tank, he's got a most impressive dorsal fin that sticks up at the back, which he will use for an impressive courtship dance to, to woo the females. Uh, they are very docile, so don't keep them with anemones, otherwise they will get eaten. Right, let's have a look what we're going to feed this little guy. The key to success with these scooter blenders is feeding. They are slow at feeding, lazy feeders, and can easily be outcompeted by other fish. So the real danger is they starve to death. But this one, he ain't gonna starve because he is on an a la carte diet. The first thing I feed is first bite copepods, which you can see here. And I dose about two mil twice a day. And I use the turkey baster to pump the food right near to where the little scooter blender is sitting. And not only does he love it, all the rest of them do. He's also on uh, lobster eggs. Thanks to Jamie at Ness's Lair, told me he likes lobster eggs. Uh, again, I defrost that and use the turkey baster to pump the eggs right next to where he's sat so that he actually gets some food. But all the others are loving his arrival because they also are enjoying the increased amount of copepod feeding and lobster eggs as well. And there you go for dragonettes. His favourite on a Friday is a little bit of live brine shrimp, which I picked up from the LFS, as you can see here. Not any brine shrimp, Yorkshire brine shrimp. So uh, it comes in loads of water, which can be kind of contaminating. So I pour it through a sieve, uh, separate the water and the brine shrimp. Uh, I then pour the RO water over the brine just to rinse them off. And then they will then go into the tank, which he absolutely loves. All these kind of small pieces that he can eat easily is what he loves. The nice, live, fleshy meat. Now at Ness's lair, uh, he also got them, got him feeding on small bits of frozen food. So that was one of the reasons why I also chose him because it gives him a greater chance of survival as well as he watches a little bit of brine shrimp floating past. What a great little guy. So I picked him up from Ness's lair online for just £30 plus delivery, which if you shop around on the internet, that is an absolute bargain. Here he is meeting the clownfish for the very first time and I was very nervous. The reason I bought him from Ness's Lair is their fish quarantine system. He was there for four weeks, had a copper dip, two fresh water dips and to make sure that he's not got any diseases bringing it into the reef. They have a clear passion for fish at Ness's Lair. My wife's named him Larry. On the live stream they named him Sharpie. Well, 
call him what you like. He is a beautiful fish. I contacted Jamie at Nessie's Lair through Facebook. I reserved the fish, paid for it online, and uh, he sent me pictures and videos before he arrived. Now he's settled in really well in the last three days. He's loved exploring the aquascape. He likes the elevated cave and he's eating well. But keep following on the channel to see how he gets on. Thank you so, so much for watching this episode. It does mean a lot. If you've got this far, it means a huge amount to me. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up like button. You don't want to miss the next episode. Next episode, we're going to go to Blackburn up near Manchester and we're going to visit Crackner, the Frag Swap. Super, super excited for that one. Hoping to meet some of you Instagrammers and YouTubers up there. Um, and I, I yeah, genuinely looking forward to it. So don't miss the vlog, Crackner 2021. It is going to be epic. But for now, everybody, Thank you so much from a sunny Derbyshire for tuning in. You lot take care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.